Okay, so if you remember back in the other lecture, the first part I was saying from March 21st, starting tonight to July 1st, is the sneak preview of Saturn in Aquarius. So we're going to start to maybe get an idea of what that will feel like during the whole time Saturn is in Aquarius. And the longer time period Saturn's going to be sitting there is going to be from December 18th until March of 2023. So the timing of when it goes into Aquarius for that longer stretch of time is unique because the day after December 19th, Jupiter moves into Aquarius and they come at an exact conjunction or the same degree of the same sign on the solstice on December 21st, which also feels significant. And this conjunction only happens every 20 years. It's known as the Great Conjunction. And it, it sounds strange to say it in these terms, but it represents the old systems dying. I almost hate to use that word, but on a metaphorical level, it, um, it seems somewhat literal, but old, the out with the old, in with the new, new growth beginning. And it's this simultaneous kind of process um, of rebirth. So there's an atmosphere of change. And I feel like, you know, officially Saturn hasn't even moved into Aquarius and we're already feeling it. It's this edge of a new era that requires the resolution of old problems. Um, and if people have studied about the age of Aquarius and, you know, been interested in that, I know it sounds pretty great, um, <laughs> but there's not an official start date and I was listening to a talk by my teacher, Emily Trinkus, this morning, and, you know, what she said made a lot of sense, that changing eras is a process. I mean, this is a big, giant change, so obviously it wouldn't happen overnight, so you don't really know the exact start date, but probably when we look back on this time, maybe even towards you know, tw 10, 20 years down the road, we might think, ah, oh, it was sort of within these few years, you know? And I do think it's significant that Saturn and Jupiter are coming together in Aquarius. That, to me, that could be a hint that this age of Aquarius is beginning. Um, and what is really special about this conjunction is that it ends a 200-year cycle. So even though Jupiter and Saturn meet up together every 20 years, over the past 200 years, it's always been in an earth sign. And this is going to initiate a whole new 200 year cycle of these two planets coming together in an air sign. I think that's a big deal. Um, and so in a nutshell, you know, earth represents material security, resistance to change. And that's not always a bad thing. Like, you know, again, I have a ton of earth in my chart. It's, I think it's great to have a solid foundation and things that you can count on, <laughs> but you can get stuck in that. And what air represents is ideas, change and disruption to establish systems. So I don't think we're gonna be in for disruption and change for 200 years, but I do think it's time for some fresh energy, for some completely new ways of doing things and this air sign conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn seems like sort of the kickoff um, and Aquarius is a really good sign I think to start with because it is such an experimental sign and I think there will be a lot of trial and error involved under this astrology but we kind of already know some of the things that don't work. And so <laughs> that can help us uh, move forward. And, um, and also people seem really invested in reaching out and staying connected. And that's really important, you know, just to use the available astrology. That's why I liked calling it structured revolutionary. Like, okay, we're going to make some big changes, but like we can still feel secure as we're doing this, because that's why change is so scary. But if we're all kind of in it together, then hopefully it will feel less scary. <laughs> um, and so that's the big picture of, of kind of what's going on. I'm really hoping in the next few months that, that we do get 
some of these ideas of Saturn and Aquarius going, even if we can't implement everything right away, I think we're going to see, we're being forced to see that there are new ways of doing things. Um, and sometimes that's how it happens. We get forced to see it <laughs> because people like their, their habits. And um, that's kind of the, the meat of what I had to present. And I did want to, you know, it's a small group in here. So just kind of see if, if people had some questions or, um, or something to share before we, we close. Is there anybody out there? <laughs> it's okay if you don't. <laughs> well, well, I just I have an observation I can share. Okay. Uh, and that's that there's, as an Aquarius myself, um, what you're describing in terms of the sort of global solar system phenomena is also i've seen some seeing some par you know parallels in my own life but you know mm -hmm. the interesting thing about astrology in general is uh, you know we we think we have so much sovereignty over ourselves and our actions and all of these you know disparate events that i've manifested myself and you know uh by, by the seat of my pants and and then somebody comes along with astrology and says oh yeah all this stuff that's been happening it's you know it's in the stars yeah and that's a good point and because i'm a horoscope writer i have i've been learning so much lately because you know the, these themes are very accurate you know if i stick mm -hmm planets and the signs and what they're doing i can get a really good take on the themes but i just don't always know exactly how it will play out because it can play out a lot of ways but the mm -hmm. themes themselves are it's uncanny and i'm an astrologer and i'm still like wow that astrology yeah. worked <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for that i have a couple other questions um but that's a really good observation um cool. thank you i have um Shakrusha. <laughs> hey, <clears throat> so um, I kind of have a understanding like on a global perspective with Saturn moving into Aquarius, but more so on like a personal level. If I have Aquarius in my fourth house and I have Saturn moving into there, like what can I be looking for as far as manifesting towards like for myself on a personal level? Right. And, you know, that's something I would definitely go into more in a reading. So I'll, I'll keep it brief. But in general, you know, fourth house has to do with your base of operations, your security. Um, so probably the things that you thought kept you safe um, might not be like you might have to change your idea about that um, and be open to new ideas instead of rigidly holding on to like, but this was the way, this is how we did it, you know? <laughs> so that's what I'm picturing, yeah. Ah, uh, okay, all right. That's kind of the understanding I had, I, I was just, you know. Yeah, that's good, that's a good, good take. Um, okay, so I have Mary, um, and she typed to me, mentioned the virus and elections. And yeah, in general, I've been speaking in the context of the virus, but as far as like a timeline or like what's going down, what the medical people are saying to me matches the astrology where it's like we're in this year that's full of retrogrades so like nothing is happening quickly so when they say yeah you're more for a vaccination that probably sounds about right and the thing that's helpful though for research for science for medicine is saturn in aquarius because I feel like anyone who is working on some cutting edge technologies right now um, and things that help people are getting astrological support for this. So that's why I think a breakthrough could occur during the sneak preview time before July, but then before the public has access to it could take till next year easily. So that's an instance where I feel the astrology really matches up to it. Um, but as far as just things feeling like really slow going, we've got, we still have to get through eclipses. We have to get through Venus retrograde, a couple more Mercury, a Mars retrograde. I feel like 
oh yeah, just like kind of slow down and like not be out doing a million things already sort of matched this year. We're supposed to kind of wrap up some things in our own lives. And the elections is another thing I talked about at the beginning of the year. I did a talk on 2020 and I did feel, and I, I'm not alone. This is astrology. Astrologers feel that it's the high likelihood of being kind of a cluster because Mercury will be stationing direct right around election day. And the last time that happened was that Al Gore election where they couldn't decide who it was for a long time and all the systems were messed up. And we've already seen it in Super Tuesday, which was during a retrograde. Um, and so, and you add a pandemic on top of that. I'm like, this doesn't look like a climate for, <laughs> you know, things to go smoothly. Now the outcome, we don't know. We don't, you know, that, that seems like a wild card, but it does seem like things will not be business as usual. So the likelihood that it's going to stay the same is not high. And so that kind of makes me think change in, in leadership. So <laughs> those are my speculations there. Um, so I think, let's see, send information to follow on social media. Yes. So I will put to everyone, someone just asked about that. You can see most of my stuff on, um, let's see, I wish I had my social media links handy. KJ, are you on here? Let's see. <laughs> uh, I know because I do most of my work for janspiller.com and um, KJ who's on here uh, share, she does a lot of this. We work together on the messaging and she's going to share the Instagram and Facebook. And then if you go to Jan Spiller Astrology YouTube, um, I'm putting out monthly overviews and starting in April, there's going to be all 12 signs available to um to see your horoscope so that's new it used to be just the birthday month but we decided oh this is a good resource for everybody <laughs> so um jan instagram okay uh <laughs> you got a compliment kj <laughs> yay thank you oh yeah and cardinal fire astrology i do put the same horoscopes as janspiller.com um and i will post my events and that type of thing like like this one I'm really grateful you, you came to attend. This is new for me. It felt very Aquarian that I was going to get on this technology and I do videos all the time, but you know, then you can stop it if you mess up. And this was, this is a new thing for me being live on video. So thanks for sharing that with me. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm going to sign off cause I have to go do a reading at five, but, um, I will probably see some of you back in the big room. I hope you enjoy the rest of the fair. Have a great night, everybody. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Have a good day, too. Okay, thank you.